Hello, Harosha Shibe here with another one of my thought bubbles. And on this, the day that uh, Bitcoin has broken 6,000, I thought we can talk about the value of Bitcoin in and of itself, or at least the perception of the value of Bitcoin. In particular, you know, as we move forward from now, you know, the present, uh, moving forward to the future, and our actions here in the present, uh, will become our past and will be referenced to for people to either build off of, you know, disregard, move forward, think about when going into the space. I wanted to talk about the, you know, the value of Bitcoin in itself, perception of numbers um, that has a lot of that has to do, you know, we need to do sales and things of that nature. If you ever go and look out and wonder why things are like 999 in the, at the nine or how something that is 99 cents uh, has you know people go and buy and purchase that how could that be uh, the pricing of things the pricing of numbers has there's a whole psychology to that and it's built into our you know fiat and economic system and now we have a totally different economic system bitcoin whose value is um being designed or created to be something different from the current economic system, you know, the whole concept of self sovereignty. And so it made me think of the concepts, you know, the, the concept of psychology of numbers is why you may notice that things are always in, in, in the end of nine. Uh, there's a whole ream of books that kind of explain that to you as far as psychology of sales techniques, how. People don't really like precise numbers. That's why you don't see something that's priced like $7.82. They're kind of like the whole differential, like a five or a nine. They feel like they need to get some kind of a deal, some type of value out of their uh, the, the fiat they're being spending. And it made me think about Bitcoin and how we need to stop thinking in the terms of Bitcoin's value in fiat, which currently at the fiat price is $6,000, but in bits. And people have been trying to do this for a while. Uh, there's different websites devoting and breaking down how bits work, you know, the breakdown of Bitcoin in itself. But I'm thinking just the value of bits. How do you get someone to spin in bits and not think of the fiat, but think of it in the terms of Bitcoin? This is a, a percentage or a, a break off because Bitcoin is fractional. Of my Bitcoin that I am spending, am I actually getting the full value of it? And... Is it the value of the item worth those bits? And it, it's going to take some time to kind of get into that concept to divorce us. So from fiat, divorces from fiat, that concept is going to take some time. But we put some effort to it, we can do it. So this is what I mean. For example, this is a penny. A penny is the lowest denomination of the fiat currency system you know you have your dimes your nickels your quarters I'm thinking of USD terms here and on the other side on the other side of that you have you know your fives your tens your twenties your hundred dollar bills your fifties if you're feeling I don't know naughty I guess and these concepts of fiat the concept of the greenback if you will is very important it all our entire economic system is based around this uh, currency that is um, being devalued and inflationary and what we can you see all the time those grocery bags of what you can spend a hundred dollars in 1950 a hundred dollars in the 60s a hundred dollars in the 70s 80s 90s 2000s and now how is less and less of what we're getting and there's a certain whole psychology a component to the whole concept of sales and value and a lot of it has to do just how we do break things down you know the fiat currency we're currently in is uh based on two decimal points the tens the hundreds while bitcoin is based off of eight and in this new economic system of eight decimal points of breaking down value, it means that we can fractionalize our, our wholeness, if you will, a little bit longer and more than, say, currently right now with the, the current fiat system. So it made me think, because we have these denominations of uh, Bitcoin in this fractional way, you know, 
how can we get people to value the the low end, the the satoshi, the single satoshi, the the or the bit, which is the one right above it? How do we get people to value and think of those terms like you think of pennies and dimes and nickels, of how you want to spend or quarters, those little fractional amounts of value? Or even the ones and the twos and the fives, the tens, the twenties, that little bit of spending money that people have, how can we get them to actually want to spend it, but value that in the terms of bits instead of terms of fiat value of a product? So it made me think of the proverbial coffee. It made me think the value of a cup of coffee. What is that in Bitcoin? So before we get into that, we kind of kind of cover some base terms. You know, the base unit of one Bitcoin is 0. 0.0000. Then you have 10 megabits. Then you have a megabit. Then you have uh, 10 kilobits. And then you have, you know, the te- te- 10 kilobits. And then you have 100 bits. So you have that breakdown of a bit. And then you have 10 bits, and then you have the one bit, or otherwise known as Satoshi. Now, the one above the, the one bit is the 10 bit, sometimes referred to as a finny, in, a, in the ode to Hal Finney, just like Satoshi is an ode to Satoshi Nakamoto. And you may see these terms in your wallets or in blog posts or things of that nature. So I'm thinking, you know. When we think of the penny, you know, most people want to get rid of it because it's worth more than, uh, it's, not, it's not worth producing or making or doing any of that. But the penny does have some kind of shopping value or economic cost, if you will, psychologically. You know, there's penny candies that don't really exist anymore, but people still think of those terms if you're a certain age of a certain generation. You used to get, you know, these penny candies or nickel candies, or you can go and get, you know, when you get the change of... Uh, a lollipop for a quarter. There are certain concepts or ideas or two quarters gets you a soda pop. This idea of the value of what you can obtain with small fractions of a, of a currency. And the psychological opponent, when you think of a product or you think of something like candy, you think of in change, in terms of change, psychology. Soda pop, same thing. You think of a change or maybe at most a dollar bill. Now, because of taxes and the way inflation has gone on, that's not necessarily the case. But that psychological concept of a dollar, if you will, McDonald's for the longest time traded on that psycho- psychological concept of a dollar and had what is called the dollar menu. You know, you can get a small hamburger, a small fry, a small soda, coffee. Uh, on the breakfast end, you can get a sausage biscuit, a hash brown. Um, a small value for a dollar during pretty much the economic collapse from 2008 to about, I think they stopped around 2014, really. Another place that did it, Subway, $5. You can get a foot long for $5. And so they were able to, I guess you can say, survive for a while while the $5 foot long was there before the economic collapse. A branding, the concept of people willing to spend and just pull one thing out of their wallet or swipe their card or whatever and know that only five dollars is removed from their from their system, if you will. Um, it's easy. You don't have to fish out for change except maybe for in case of taxes. But it made me think of a, you know the 99 cent stores. Um, some places in the country, it's just 99 cents. There's no sales tax on certain items. Some places, it is a sales tax, so it's 99 cents. And I think here in the state of California, it makes it like a buck oh eight for items. So when the concept of these stores, these dollar stores popping up, uh, people see value in a dollar of an item. There's a whole psychological component to that. And this is why, again, when it comes to price of higher value items, you know, the concept of the car. You see things in like nines and maybe sevens, like odd numbering, but never whole numberings. Um, if you ever play the game The Price is Right, that's, you know, you're better off having an odd number than a whole number when picking out the price of something. So, how to view Bitcoin? When you have this a different concept of fractionalization 
um, do we do it by the point one one zero zero zero, or do we move it towards like the bit denomination to make it more palatable psychologically for people? And currently at this present time, point one zero um, as a recording of this video is five hundred sixty four dollars fiat. Okay, but we're trying to get away from fiat. We're trying to get away of viewing the value of something in the terms of bits. When you think of Arizona tea, you you are for the longest time, and still to this day, through all the economic trials and tribulations that are happening, you get it for ninety nine cents to such a point, a psychological point of the value of Arizona tea, tied to the price of point ninety nine cents as its value, that people get really upset and tweet at the store that might charge more than that. So how do we get the concept of the fiat value of a product, that concept that has been so ingrained into our economic system, and think of it in the terms of Bitcoin, the value of a product in Bitcoin, and the value of a product in bits. So for example, going back to the core, um, there was a show, Mr. Robot, this season it premiered, uh, season three of it, and it had... Uh, and in, has an in-currency cryptocurrency system called an e-coin. And the price of the car in, in the show was priced in USD and is priced in e-coin. So the price of the fiat value of the car was $5,000. Or, sorry, sorry, $5,000, $5,500. But the price in e-coin was 5000 so I'm not talking about when we think of the terms of Bitcoin versus fiat, that we're just a little bit below a fiat price. We're still tying our prices to fiat. I'm talking about the actual, what would we pay for a cup of coffee? What would we think in the terms of bits? How many bits, the fractional component of a Bitcoin, will we give up for, the, for a cup of coffee? Not as USD equivalent, not as fiat equivalent of bits, but the actual, if we were to break down to bits and we were to actually negotiate and go one and say, I will give up this amount of bits for that cup of coffee. Because as, bits, as Bitcoin grows in value, you know, those bits grow in value. I know it, they, the consumer knows it. So a buck fifty, seven bucks is typically the USD price. So bits go up in value. And I know I'm handing you something that is going to appreciate over time. My value of negotiations when it comes to pricing is in my favor versus the merchant's favor. And it, in a sense, it, it's also in the favor of a merchant, really. So 0 0.001 BTC. Let's say that would be the value, something I negotiated for the price of a Bitcoin. It can be either, for psychological purposes, I could say 100 bits or 10,000 Satoshis for this cup of coffee. That's what I'm willing to part with, with a cup of coffee. And a merchant might take that because they know eventually that it's 10,000 bits or that 100 bit or that 0 .001 BTC could grow in value, especially if they can get, keep getting people to pay at that price for Bitcoin. Eventually, over time, you can eventually have, you know, a full Bitcoin. So 10,000 Satoshis for a cup of coffee is what I'm saying that you could probably negotiate with. And can it be done? Can we start negotiating in the terms of bits and Bitcoin versus in terms of Bitcoin for in the fiat value, that transaction, and divorcing ourselves from that system? And because we have the psychology, still have a little bit of psychology in the tying of two, the two decimal 100 to 10 place, um, fiat system we still have to you know it's why you don't you won't see it's why people don't really like it when they go into their wallet 0 0.0001 of bitcoin they kind of like to see the usd value of it because that's the psychology that they're around um some some wallets do show you like a bits you know 10 bits ten thousand bits and trying to trying to push people to think in those psychological terms but we're not quite there yet we're still thinking in the fiat terms the value of bitcoin the value of the the bits that we have you know and the pricing associated with it you know the 9.81 there so if we can rethink this if we can rethink the the, the this fractional element of bitcoin the 0 0.00001 uh, up to the eighth decimal 
and reorientate ourselves psychologically to think in the terms of bits, you know, make it more palatable either by bits or by Satoshi or the pricing. Could we start pricing items? Could we make it to the point to where people, when they think of their fractional components of Bitcoin, when they're thinking to the eighth decimal point, when they see that into the wallet and they convert it into, you know, bits and thinking bits instead of thinking of USD, can we actually use the power of this fractional value that is going to go up? It's not going to go down. We're hitting 6,000 and maybe it's never going to go to zero. It's going to have a long staying power than the current inflationary system that we're in. Could we start beginning to think and start negotiating in bits? Saying, I am willing to pay, you know, 100 bits for this or 10 bits for that or 10,000 Satoshis for a cup of coffee. Can we start working in those terms? Start thinking of the value of items in Bitcoin, of what I'm willing to part with, than what we have currently right now with this whole tying of Bitcoin to USD. Can we leverage this increasing value of this new economic system that is not diminishing, that's never going to go to zero, that's always going to go, not necessarily always go up, but always going to retain a significant amount of economic value and actually have full control of our sovereign wealth by negotiating the prices of items, not the suggested price, not the wiggle room that the economy or practice has demonstrated that we have in negotiation, but actually fundamentally on the ground level, peer to peer, price and determine the true worth and value of a product. No acts of corruption, no regular regulatory concerns, but the fundamental true value of an actual product and item. I think that this is possible. I think it's beyond just possibility, but an ever increasing probability of occurring. So I say to you, 10,000 Satoshis for a cup of coffee. Thank you for listening. Like and subscribe. Please share, comment below, and you have a little bit of bits or Dogecoin or some uh, Ethereum classic in your wallet, Monero. Um, send some my way if you can. Thank you so much, and to the moon.